so it's a sustainable deal. Right? No matter what, if, if I have a contract with somebody and what they're getting out of it is less than they wanted, then the contract's going to break down eventually. Right? It's not a stable system. You, know, you, want, you, you want to make sure that what they're, you understand what they're getting enough that you, give, that you can give them what, they're, what they need to be able to count on getting from them what you need. So I'm in the process, I mean, those are, those are three problems that I have to figure out. And there's a, the fourth one, there's um, how do we get stuff patented fast enough, where the patent's going to come from. There's a, that's, that's, that's another system that has to be figured out as we invent new stuff. How do we layer the patents of this sufficiently to discourage anybody from competing with us, that we don't want to compete with us? Um, and, but it's all, you know, they're, 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 it's, it's problem solving and in many cases it's figuring out how much trust do we need between each other in order to have a sustainable deal. And so it's system thinking. What else? We have time for one more question. Oh, really? Okay. <laughs> I will hang around for a while because I'm cool. You guys are cool. <laughs> <laughs> um, let me talk a little about fundraising. I think that's kind of a hole here. Um, uh, there's, a, the, the, there's an idea I'm developing that I, I'm going to call the rule of halves. Um, and here's another, it's another piece of psychology. Um, and it's not that different from the early adopters, middle adopters pattern. Um, the, the vast majority of people that you will run into are the kinds of people that would like to help finish off your deal than the people who would want to be the first investor in your deal. If you need to raise $100,000 and you've got 90, you don't have a big problem. You're going to find somebody who's going to put that extra 10 in because as far as they're concerned, they enabled a $100,000 deal with their little $10,000. It feels very good to them to be able to do that. And they're doing what nine other people have already decided, or $90,000 worth of people have already decided is a good idea. They're just jumping onto the end of it. Right? That's, that's, it's like bandwagon stuff, right? Um, it, you know, it's rare people who want to be the first guy in uh, are rare. So you know, one, one, one part of the principle then is that to the extent that you identify people who are more the guy who wants to be the first in, keep very close track of them <laughs> because they're, they're, they, they're going to be very useful in your life. Um, but, uh, uh, but you don't want to, um, if they're the latter kind, right? If, they're, if there's somebody who is more inclined to be somebody who puts in the money towards the end, if you go in right now and say, I don't have anyone who's invested, but I'm wondering if you'd be interested in being an investor, you I mean, they're gonna, the answer is gonna be, it's either gonna be no, or come back when you have more than half of your investment done. Whether they say it that way or not, that's essentially what it, what it amounts to. So what's the rule of halves? Um, this is H-A-L-B-E-S, not H-A-B-E-S. Um, the, uh, um, with the exception of your first couple investors, your, the, your, your stated goal for raising money should never be more than twice what you already know that you have. So when I was first, I raised $800,000 for Tethys. Um, but it started out as I was raising $500,000 for Tethys because I knew where two hundred and fifty dollars of that was. So the first time I was talking to somebody who I didn't know was already in, I was asking them to help me close the deal. I was asking them, you know, oh, essentially, I was I was halfway through, saying. right? You're I'd already raised 250. Percentage. I'm trying to get to 500. Will you come in, yeah. right? So I'm I'm asking people in a, when I'm in a position of already being halfway done. That person came in for 100,000, and I talked to Scott, and we decided that we should go ahead and raise our ceiling to looking for 600 instead of 500. And we had some good reasons. It wasn't just arbitrary. It, it, this isn't. It wasn't gamesmanship. But it came in fast enough. It was like the first guy asked came in. It came in fast enough that I felt like there was an opportunity. So we went, now we had 350 trying to raise six. Again, the next person were more than half. Um, I now had, at that point, I had, say, four or five people who were interested in putting about 50K in uh, that they were committed in a circle. And we were talking to another person who wanted to put a little bit more in. Um, and we were able to, because you know, we, we essentially, at, at that point, it sounded like we were practically finished. We raised another 200 from that person. We put the ceiling up to 800,000. Um, so, but I think if we come in trying to raise 800,000, I had 250, I would still be telling you that I hope to raise money for this company. 
Let me give you another example. There's a company called. Uh, wait, wait, wait. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So. So those early investors where you were saying, I'm raising 500,000, sure. didn't they have concerns when all of a sudden after 500,000 it came to It changed a little 000? bit? Yeah, okay, so um, there, so there's legitimate, so there's a legitimate reason. I mean, I, I managed, and um, I, part of the reason I'm able to do this was because I had sufficient trust with people that when I came back and said, look, um, while we are shooting for this, we think that because of where this money is, we think it would be wise for us to take it. Right. And I had sufficient trust for them to go along with that. Um, it actually, in terms of their investment, though, um, the, the way the math works out, right, um, <coughs> if, if I, um, let's say I, I, I had 10% of a company that was worth $2 million. Um, if I had 8% of a company worth 2.2 million or whatever, it's still the, uh, the, the value of my stock has not changed by other people coming in. I just look smarter because more people like this deal, right? So the, the, the actual, the harder sell is internal to the common shareholders, right? To the, to the, to the founders, mm -hmm. right? Their piece of the pie is, is getting smaller. Yeah. Now the value of that piece, it's the same deal, right? Yeah. I mean, the, the value of that stock, the, the value of the company has gone up because you've taken more cash in, but still it feels a little bit tougher. It does. Um, some people freak out about going under 50% of, of the stock in a company. Um, there's a, uh, I, I don't, because pretty much not, none of your investors want to run your company, right? They may be willing to run your company if it comes down to it, right? But it's not because they want to. It's kind of like there's an old statement that if, um, if you if you owe the bank twenty thousand dollars, you have a problem. If you owe the bank if you owe the bank two hundred million dollars, the bank has a problem, right? At a certain amount, the bank needs you to be successful in what you're doing, right? Um, and in, you know, and so it's not a it's not a matter of whether you have fifty percent or not. Um, if you have to if you have to count on having fifty percent to get your way within a company, you're not operating. You know, you, you you haven't picked the right investors, and you're not operating on the right platform. You should be well beyond that. Um, so the, 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 the second instance of this story, um, if I can, what are we? Wait, I, I only got five minutes till. Yeah, I get one. Yeah. Okay, so the second instance of this story is um, there's a company called Juicy in town. And uh, uh, Juicy's original vision was that they wanted to basically make a virtual cloud computing system out of the spare cycles on all the Xboxes and handhelds and everything running. Right, so it's, it's like a little thing that runs in the background and, uh, you know, they have all these Xboxes running. I'm, I can I can pull those extra cycles and the cycles that is similar to what goes on. There's the there's a software that's that's like trying to uh, that SETI has right where it runs in the background of your computer and it's trying to listen to all the radio frequencies that SETI's processing to hear the alien knock knock joke or whatever they're expecting to hear <laughs> in the sky. So um, when uh, uh, you know, so that was their original idea, and they were trying to raise a half million or a million dollars for that. Um, and that idea was too, um, uh, it wasn't focused enough. Um, there were too many things that had to fall right for that idea to be worthwhile. But there was something there, and the thing that seemed to be there is if you just kind of pull this back to um, getting a lot of computers working together, um, uh, you know, what, what we looked at was that there was a, there was a way in video delivery. Uh, they they repurposed purpose of, it, it was a fairly, they could reuse a lot of the software, but what they wanted to do was, um, if I'm watching video and it's the same video that you're watching, I'm feeding, I'm seeding frames to you instead of you having to pull them all from the main source. So it's, it's like BitTorrent for watching video. Um, and, but that's, I mean, right now there are companies that are spending you know, if, if, if the amount of bandwidth they have to buy to serve their video could be reduced by people watching the video sharing with each other, that's $10,000, $20,000 a month that they can save by doing something that's practically transparent to the users, right? So, um, you know, that's a, that becomes something closer to an urgent itch. It's a lot easier to sell somebody because it's, it, you're, I'm not affecting anything that your, your customers visibly see, but it saves you a lot of money and you can see whether it works or not almost immediately. So they started trying to raise a half million dollars based on that, but they didn't have a lot of the software written and, and, and they weren't able to get traction. So 
um, a couple of us who heard their pitch, and, and you know, people at that point, they believed the market, but they didn't know whether they could actually make the software work or not. So we came back and said, how much software would it take exactly for you to be able to just run this on a friendly, you know, you, you have friends who have sites like this, to be able to run it on one of their sites and run the numbers and see how much bandwidth it's saving them. Uh, because that was the big unproven assumption in their thesis. And it turned out that it was only going to take about 50K worth of development to get that done. So he said, all right, well, so, yeah, I, I, what we, and this is before I got to the rule of heads, but we said, well, let's, um, all, so if five of us were willing to essentially invest 10K each in you, then we could get you to where you're going and we could see whether this happens or not and move from there. So there were two of us who had that idea. So, you know, we had two, we had 20K working on 50. It wasn't quite the half. Uh, and it turned out that we stalled when we got to four people. And, and it, it, we went through the Christmas break still working on the fifth one. By the time we got to the fifth one in the end of January, we came back and two of the original four had dropped off the map and we were back to three again. So there's a, there's a time where a deal starts to get long in the, in the tooth. People have heard about this deal and they keep hearing about this deal and they, they start to trust it less because they feel like if, this, if the deal had merit, somebody would have funded it by now, right? So something, I don't know what it is, but there must be something wrong with it because the wisdom of crowd says that it's not worthy. Um, so, you know, within this time, it really felt like we were coming towards the end of the window for them to do something. So I, t I talked to the other three and I said, what if we, you know, what, what if we were willing to go from 10,000 to 1250? Then we'd only need one more person to get to the 50. Uh, and the three of us said yes. And that afternoon he went and talked and now he just needed the one person that if they would just say yes we'd have the deal and in fact at that meeting that person committed to 1250. And the cool thing was that now there's a fifth person who threw 1250 in it because he heard he was starting to hear this deal and got excited about it and in fact there's a sixth one that may come in later on this week. No, I mean it's like it's it's kind of insane but when you really need somebody to fund you nobody's around and when you have about half of what you need you can find them fairly readily and then when you have everything that you need, people show up from all over the place wanting to, wanted, wanted to put money in. Um, so, um, yeah, so they, you know, so we finally found a way. So they're, they, they have the money that they need, and hopefully three months from now, the software will, will work. And at the point that they can show, here's a customer running the software, you can go on the site and see that it, it's invisible to you. And you can look at their data, and you can see that they had to buy 45% less bandwidth than they had the month before. And now I've got a very solid business plan and I can get the rest of the funding around it. So um, I, I, I think within the process, I mean, a lot of what people will do is they'll say, oh, in order for us to have this company, we're going to have to raise X amount of money. And then they sort they make that the fixed point and then they, you know, sort of in faith go out and just sort of assume that the market is pooled with people that will somehow, if they just keep fishing, get that money together. Um, and sometimes that works. I mean, certainly there's a lot of companies that went that way. But I, I think the advice that I would have is um, count the noses that you have. Right? What money do you have on hand? And how, do you, how can you characterize the goal that you're trying to get to as being something really no more than twice what you have in hand? And if that means that you have to take a few more steps to get there, then that's still the better way to do it uh, than sort of chasing after something that's, that's almost a little bit too big to get your arms around. Um, if this was a longer session, or if I had the two hours I thought I was going to have before um, Bob came in, not that I'm, you know, I'm, I'm okay. I love Bob. We'll bring you back. I love Bob. <laughs> but um, there were, there, uh, if, if you choose to, st I'm, I'm going to, because it's not fair, I'm not going to make you feel like you have to stick around or you're bad or whatever. But if you're willing to keep open in about 10 minutes from now, um, I will give you the four, re four most frequent reasons why business plans suck. Um, so if you want to hear that and to sort of see those as problems that you have to find solutions for, um, I'll do that in about 10 minutes. Um, but meanwhile, bio break and thanks for the time. <laughs> Thank you.